So let's have a look at what we see now. I'm going to use a whiteboard marker and we'll be looking at the image of the whiteboard marker formed in the concave mirror. So first of all, I'm holding the whiteboard marker very close to the concave mirror. Hopefully you can see the actual whiteboard marker and there's also an image of the whiteboard marker reflected from the mirror. The image is the right way up and it's also slightly larger than my actual pen. Now I'm going to start slowly moving the pen away. As I move the pen away, the image in the mirror is getting larger and larger. And that happens up to a special point here, where now all you can see is the grey and then just a little bit in front. Can you see now the image is upside down? It's a large upside down image. Now as we get close, further and further away from the mirror, the image remains upside down and it's getting smaller and smaller. So let's look at ray tracing now to explain why we see this with the image of the whiteboard marker in the concave mirror. Now let's imagine that we're looking at a concave mirror. Here's your eye. So if the focal point's here, and we've got some radius of curvature which is around here and let's imagine that we're looking at this object we're going to start with the object very close to the mirror like we did in the demonstration so let's represent the object as an arrow here now what we're going to do is a technique of ray tracing in order to work out where the image for this object is so when we're doing ray tracing we always trace two rays one of the rays we draw parallel to the principal axis. So this is the principal axis here and we can draw a ray coming from the top of the object parallel to the principal axis and then when it is reflected off the mirror the reflected ray goes through the focal point. We know that because that is how we found the focal point in the first place. Now what we do is draw a second ray in this case, we draw a ray coming from the focal point and going to the object. So here's the ray, it goes to the top of the object and is then reflected off the mirror. When it's reflected and it's come from the focal point, it's reflected parallel to the principal axis. So this is our reflection like this. Now these rays are not converging at all and no image is formed here. The image is actually formed below, behind the mirror. Because what our eye sees is these rays coming towards it and it doesn't realise that they've been reflected off the mirror. So in fact they go back behind the mirror like this. And what we see is this point where the two rays cross, which is the same as this point here, that is where we see the image. So we actually see the image being formed here. So this is a virtual image and this is the right way up. If we did the same thing, ray tracing, for the bottom of our whiteboard marker or our arrow here, both the rays would be reflected directly along the principal axis. So this point corresponds to this point here. We just see rays traveling towards our eye like this and we think that they've traveled from behind the mirror. And that is how we do ray tracing for objects close to the mirror. And that's why when I held the whiteboard marker close to the mirror it appeared enlarged and the right way up as you can see in the screenshot from the video from before. Let's now look at what happens as we move the objects further and further away from the mirror. Let's now place our object a little bit in front of the focal point. So here's our object here between the focal point and the radius of curvature. Now once again we trace our rays. So the first ray we draw parallel to the principal axis. When it is reflected off the mirror it passes through the focal point. 
the second ray we draw from the image going through the focal point to the mirror and then when it is reflected back it's reflected parallel to the principal axis. Now the point where these rays cross is actually where the image is formed because once again if we were to imagine rays going from the bottom of our object they'd all be reflected back along this principal axis and so this is where the bottom of the object appears and where these rays cross is where the top of the object appears. So let's draw our image here. This is our image and this is actually a real image because the light does pass through this point. So if we put a screen here, this image would be formed on the screen. So this is the object, this is the image and you can see that it is larger and flipped upside down just like we observed in the mirror. So let's now imagine what happens as we move this object further and further away from the screen. Okay, so let's place our object, well, let's get rid of this writing principal axis so that we can draw our object there. So here's our object, and we use the same technique of ray tracing. We draw our first ray parallel to the principal axis, and it's then reflected back through the focal point like that. And then we draw a second ray going from the object through the focal point and it's then reflected off the mirror parallel to the principal axis. So the point where these rays cross, this is where the image is formed. So this is our image. This is once again a real image because it really is there. If we put a screen, we really could see it. And you can see that as we've moved further and further away from the mirror, the image is getting smaller and smaller, but it's still upside down. And that is exactly what we saw in the demonstration earlier. So one application where you'll commonly find these concave mirrors is makeup or shaving mirrors. That's because when an object is close to the mirror, it's actually slightly magnified and so this makes it more easy to see all the details of your face because they appear slightly larger in the mirror.